Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of All Things IDA. In this episode I'm going to show you how to run IDA from command line and invoke a script and pass also arguments to the script. We'll also see how to programmatically pick up the arguments from our script and maybe later if we invoke a plugin how the plugin can actually also access the command line arguments as they exist. For that let's get started with uh, the help file and then we will explain what we can do. So let's open the IDA help file or just run IDA hit F1 and let's type command line switches and here we see that IDA does support executing a script when the database is open. So basically we need to pass the uppercase S switch and then specify the script. So for example my minus S script name and all the arguments. Now as you notice there's no mention of IDA Python but uh, as I'll show you later we will see how IDA Python implements this as well. So we're, we're gonna first do it through IDC real quick and then uh, try it out in Python and explain how it works. So uh, here we see that if we pass arguments they will be accessible through the global variable argv through IDC we can use argv.count to count how many and then access them through the indices. This is basically in IDC. Okay, so I'm going to start by writing a simple IDC test script, see how it works in IDC and then I work and focus more on Python. So let's save here, see temp hello.idc and all files great now this is uh, IDC syntax so we're not gonna spend too much time here a message percent s was passed argument arg1 let's just display the first arg or maybe we can make a loop as well all right let's just make a loop so first arg v of zero and argv dot count. Let's make here O two i i equal one i less than argv dot count i plus plus and argv of i is argv okay percent s backslash n and i and r v of i okay there's a new line return zero let's test this out and and now let's invoke either either txe minus s Hello, that IDC R1, R2, R3, for example. Then a database. So this is how the command should look like: IDA exe minus s, the script name, and as many arguments as you want. We had to enca encapsulate with quotes because we have the space here. We want them to belong to the same switch. And then the database name. Okay, so let's invoke IDA and let's see what happens. So the usual startup messages and then uh, we can see this is the output of our script. And it did indeed detect that hello.idc resolved from arg0, which is the script name, for including the command line, uh, the script name, and all the three arguments I passed. We could have, we could access them. So this is uh, working as expected. Uh, great. Now, uh, just uh, for your information, since the help file mentions that argv is a global variable, we can, for example, uh, evaluate its contents through the expression evaluator. Or even if we switch to the IDC interpreter here, and type argv without semicolon the object contents will be dumped so this is very useful so let's see what happens here 
So this is the whole object RV has been dumped. Now, this is really because of the tight integration between IDC and IDA kernel. Okay. So this should be enough for IDC. Now let's do the same for Python. So let's create another script now. This time we'll call it hello.py. Hello.py. And then I'm going to uh, import IDA API, import IDC. Now we can type top level statements in Python. So it's just enough to say the same if we want to convert the same script. Hello. My name is, and let's format. So in uh, in Ida Python to access this, by the way. So one second, we are still here. Let's switch to the Python interpreter here and type idc dot argv, and that's our key basically. That's how we can access every, uh, the arguments the, the same way we could have access them from idc. But in uh, Ida Python, we have to access them through the IDC module. So by doing that, we can see exactly the first one is the script name and all the arguments, really as simple as that. So hello, my name is uh, idc.argv. And then uh, for, uh, okay, very good, looks good. And then here, argv of, I is this one. Okay, let's test it now and with either Python. Okay, so the same stuff here instead of uh, this, we just update the script and all the arguments, same, same stuff. Let's see how that works. Okay, as well here it says the script name and all the argument values. So if you had a plugin, as long as the plugin uh, imports IDC module, they should be able to access the IDC.argv object. Okay, now, uh, now that's it basically for this video. But if you want to stick around a few more minutes, I'll explain how this magic works. So... Let's see how it works. And for that, we have to look at the IDA Python sources. So I have here uh, the IDA Python source file, the main file basically. So I did clone the IDA Python project and I'm opening IDA Python.cpp, which is the actual main file, which basically has the plugin descriptor block and so on. Now there is a function called convert IDC args. This function is called when the database is initialized, so we have an events hook. We listen to various events, but in particular, we wait for the database initialized. So this event is received when the database initialization has uh, completed, and the kernel is about to run scripts. And uh, it's going to pass us if it's a new database, and what's the script? And so let's uh, see what we do here. We, we go inside the convert and we use the expression header file, which lets us programmatically interface with the IDC language. So what the IDA Python plugin does really is use the find global variable, uh, the global IDC variable by name, which is argv. We should see it here basically the argv. Once we resolve it as an IDC object, so as well this is an expression, that's a topic for the future where we talk about that header file, but for now they basically access that variable programmatically and then they also create a new Python list programmatically using the Python C API. Then we use expression HPP methods such as get IDC uh, value attributes. We pass the attribute um, that's the recipient, where are we, what object, what's the attribute name, and attribute names basically we are formatting them simply object 0, 1, 2, 3, y just like percent d and so on. 
just because if you remember, if we switch back to IDC and type argv, uh, these are basically the attributes, so 0, 1, 2, 3. So that's basically what we're doing. We're simply uh, querying IDC variable and inserting using the PC, um, uh, Python C API, creating a list. And then after we do that, what we do is we programmatically import IDC, the IDC module, and we put the attribute, the, arg the list that we just created into the IDC module. And this is useful because once we put it in an already loaded module, it will stay there in the module. Anybody having access to the module can access the uh, command line uh, arguments. So uh, <clears throat> so that's it for today. I hope you found this uh, useful and uh, I'll see you next time.